Hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Sarah Harris and I currently work at Benali Primary School in Edinburgh. My substantive post is Principal Teacher but I'm currently Acting Deputy and I have responsibility for Nursery to Primary 3. My presentation today um, is looking at how I have developed writing as part of a play-based Primary 1, exploring mark making, storytelling and drawing to inspire and create imaginative writers. Throughout the course of this presentation, I aim to cover the following points. My journey into primary one and play, why now, research, writing in primary one, our evaluations, and what's next for us at Benali. So my journey, I thought I would share um, with you so far. So I've been teaching for 25 years now, um, 18 of those years have been mainly based in primary one, but often sometimes doing primary two or a composite one, two class. I did also um, get the chance to do a couple of years in nursery. Since I joined Benali as principal teacher six years ago, we have worked on developing play. And although we know there are areas still to develop, we're happy with the way that our journey has gone so far. For me, the biggest influence was the time that I spent in the nursery. Um, learning from the really skilled practitioners was a game changer for me, especially taking that um, back into primary one. It also reignited my passion for learning, the time that I had in the nursery, and I delved back into study and learning about childhood development. I completed the Froebel and Childhood Practice Certificate, which was amazing. I would highly recommend it. Um, to anybody. I know lots of EYPs do it, but as a primary one practitioner, I thought it was really inspiring and really gave me the background knowledge that I needed to explain the changes that were being made in primary one. I also started to read a lot of early years literature as I could see that the change was coming across the city of Edinburgh and it was really important for me to have that deep understanding of why we were doing it. As I said, the experience that I had in nursery really helped me with the changes that we've made in developing our play pedagogy in primary one. The launch of Realising the Ambition and the research that I've done has helped me to lead the changes that have been made in our primary one spaces. The next couple of slides show our play environment in primary one, just to give you an idea of where we are at with our play just now. So you'll see from these photos, these are actually two classrooms and we've opened the doors up between the two. We have two primary ones this year and being able to open the doors has been a game changer. It has meant that we've not needed double the amount of play resources. So in one side of the room, we have our home corner set up and in the other side, we have our block play area set up. This has allowed us to make these areas really quite big and um, so that we can have a lot of children playing in those spaces. We have a lot of floor space um, around the areas too. We have moved to only having one teaching table in each of the classrooms, which has been a big change for us as well. Um, and it does show that we have made that move away from everybody sitting on bottoms on chairs in primary one, and it's definitely more play-based. So it gives a really big, space and really big feel to the room, the children free flow through both classrooms. As well as our classroom spaces, we also in the top left picture there, we have a space outside our classrooms, which is really in the corridor, but it runs the whole way through the school like this. So in this space, um, it's not a carpeted area. So we have our sand, we have arts and crafts and painting, we have clay, and work in this area as well and the doors into the classroom are opened as well so you can see everybody and um, from wherever you are the next two pictures show our outdoor space um, now we are a ppp school so we do not have the luxury of being able to have an outdoor space set up we have to make sure that everything is brought in at the end of each day which does come with its challenges um, but we have, we think, made the most of what we can with, with the space that we have. This is also the school playground. So 
when it comes to things like playtime and lunchtime, everything does get tucked into the side. But for the other times, the children can use the whole space. So I think we're really lucky to have that. We have free flow between all of our spaces throughout the day, which again is a big change for us in, in primary one. So why now? If we were to fully embrace play pedagogy, it was important to look at how our primary one was run and what changes we could make to allow our children much more opportunity for meaningful, uninterrupted play within their school day. The quote from Realising the Ambition that I've included really stood out to me from a literacy point of view and the importance of our role in nurturing engagement and encouraging children to see themselves as readers and writers. And that it's not just about going through the process. The shift for us needed to move from predominantly adult led to following the interests and voices of the children. As that was what would engage and encourage the children to become successful learners. So we made changes to all the points below to build on that engagement. So the structure of the day. We now in our primary one environment have a soft start. The children come in, immediately put their things away and then get set off to play. This is a far more relaxed and enjoyable way for the children to come into school. It allows all of the adults that work in the environment time to spend with the children and to make observations. We have looked at decreasing the size and time of our literacy and seal input sessions that we have each day. And we certainly didn't start them right at the beginning of primary one. We had plenty of time for play. And we also use much more responsive planning as part of our structure of the day so that we are listening to the voice of the child. The role of the adult immediately changed when we were lucky to have both an EYP and a PSA for our primary one area. That had a huge impact on the space that we could use as we could now have the free flow between the outside and the inside. It allowed more time for observations from all of the adults and working with the children in the primary one space. And it also gave us all time to get to know the children and particularly to know the children as individuals. The pace in primary one. So we slowed everything down to allow more time for uninterrupted play. This, I feel, had a less stressful impact on the teacher, um, feeling that need and the rush to cover every single aspect of the curriculum. Um, refocusing our thoughts back to the fact that early level curriculum starts in nursery and not just in primary one and to look at the past experiences that the children had had coming from all the different nurseries that to come from. The curriculum links into the pace of work. So the main parts for this presentation thinking about our literacy. So we really slowed our pace of work down. Previously, we would have tried to get our children through block three of our City of Edinburgh Council Literacy Rich programme. And what we found was that as the children moved into primary two, they would have been reassessed on their block two literacy rich and the majority of the, the children would have um, gone back and covered it again. So we asked the question um, to ourselves, why? Are we covering it in primary one if it is just going to be repeated in primary two? Why do we not just look at covering block one literacy rich so the children have got all their initial sounds and then extend that learning to ensure that the children are really confident in their blending and being able to segment words to be able to spell them and to spend a little bit longer on actually looking at structure of a sentence and, and how to do our writing. So that's what we did. We have taken that big step and last year was the first year that we just covered block one. And I do have to say that um, 
particularly for the children who in the past would have found it more challenging, have reached the end of the year feeling much more confident about their spelling and their learning. And we're hoping to keep this going as we move into primary two and really think about what is the need to push the children through at this pace. Surely by the end of the year, we want them to be confident in what they have learned. With reading, again, we looked at um, our reading scheme and thought, well, we're giving children reading books to read when they haven't even learned all of their initial sounds, they've not um, had all of their common words or tricky words yet. So we started the primary one year off with a huge focus on reading for enjoyment and shared that with the parents um, and looking at the importance of sharing stories together, um, looking at rhyming, another, another very important part, um, and shared with them that we would not be giving out reading books until the children had completed all of their block one sounds. So we did that. We then looked at changing our reading scheme um, and we have moved from the Oxford Reading Tree to Rising Stars, which has a bigger focus on phonics. And again, for the children, they could see themselves having more success in reading because they were able to, to sound them out and blend the words together rather than having so many unfamiliar words that they were just having to rote learn. The writing, which I am obviously here to talk to you about today, but we have introduced new structure and format to an imaginative writing and as a result of that we definitely have far more confident writers. Um, in the past, again, we would have started that whole writing process right at the beginning um, of the year in primary one, perhaps setting context for children that had no relevance, um, asking them in one writing session to be able to draw their picture and then have a go at writing a, their story, whether or not that was through their mark making or having a go at sounding out and spelling words. But for us, again, if they haven't learned all the initial sounds, how are they going to do that confidently? So the research that I started um, undertaking, particularly with the focus on thinking about writing and storytelling, um, I've included some of the examples on the slide here. Um, clearly, I think we'll all be familiar with realising the ambition and the positive impact that this has had on providing guidance for those working in early years and also beyond. I've also included the book Can I Go and Play Now by Greg Bottrell. Um, this has had a huge influence on how I approach play and I would always recommend this book for those starting their play journey. The princesses, dragons and helicopter stories. Um, I also love this book and the ideas within it. But for me, I was looking for something more than just the oral storytelling for P1. So though it had amazing ideas and things that I did try out, it just wasn't quite the right thing um, for us at Benali. The Putting Storytelling at the Heart of Early Childhood Practice, another brilliant book and again has lots of really amazing ideas um, and different ways to look at storytelling. So the two that have had the biggest impact um, on our writing journey are the Message Centre and the Drawing Club. Both of these are courses that are run by Greg Bottrell, um, the author of Can I Go and Play Now? And having done the training, both sets of training, I could see how this would fit well into our play-based environment um, with the children. So the first change that we made in primary one after having attended the message centre training by Greg Bottrell was setting up our own message centre. Previously, um, within the classroom, we did have provision for writing and drawing in all our play areas. But one of the things that we found was that the children were not really making use of the writing equipment that they could have had. So the message centre to us sounded like a great idea. So within our classroom, we have on the left hand side, this is really the sort of start of our message centre. We have provision there for the children to take into any space within primary one and use. We have all different types of media for them to write and draw with. 
pencils, crayons, chalks, marker pens, everything that you can think of, wiper pens, lots of clipboards again so they can take them and transport them across the room, glue, scissors, string, masking tape so that they can create whatever they want to with the materials. In the right hand picture we have our paper trays again that the children can access themselves so that they can do whatever it is that they want to do. The little table with the basket in it, that is what we start with in primary one. So this is our mystery messenger box and what we did was we had a mystery messenger left a note for the children in the basket and as you do in primary one you make a really big deal and um, we had at that point brightly coloured tablecloth over the table and the basket was all wrapped up with a big bow on it so that when the children came in in the morning it really just took everybody's interest so we unwrapped the bow opened up the basket and introduced the children to what was inside which was a message which was made up of different marks and symbols so the children could interpret that in any way they wanted and from that the children then started to leave messages back in the basket for the mystery messenger and this was really amazing to see because children who were reluctant mark makers had started taking the clipboards making little marks and things to leave um, for the mystery messenger so we keep this up all year round um, so that the children can have access to this and access to all the materials and it really did make a huge difference especially in engaging the children who were reluctant um, to come and pick up a pencil so we found that to be a great way to get the children that those initial stages of mark making we did things like take the children out for a symbol hunt so that they could see in the environment the different examples of symbols and again the children would come back to class and they would repeat those symbols in their pictures and drawings that they were doing and leave them in the mystery messenger box so this really did kind of kick start our writing for the year as well as having a message centre in our indoor spaces we felt it was really important for the children to have it outdoors as well and again because we have to bring everything back inside the building the tray trolley was the best um, option for us to use so everything really that we have inside we try to have outside so that the children can access the materials um, where they want it's also great outside because we think have things like the water pot with the brushes so that they can mark make on the ground or on the walls um, so it's just having that opportunity for the children to do the mark making wherever they are so after seeing the success of the message center i pretty much immediately signed up for the drawing club course with greg bottle and that was a whole year ago so we've now been doing it for over a year and a half and the statement that I've put on the slide here was what I wrote at the end of last year um, in reflection on our writing so basically the impact that this work has had on the children has been significant and it continues to, to be so the level of detail in the children's illustrations for storytelling has been immense their ability and confidence to orally share their stories, including all the detail they have drawn, has helped the children to inspire each other. The children talk about the vocabulary at different times of the day and across the week. All the children have a sense of pride and achievement in their work at every session. They love to share and magpie each other's ideas. I have found that all the children now have a go at writing independently. As a class teacher, seeing the progression from the initial mark making through the message centre to the detail and discussion about their drawing club stories to watching them then become independent writers has allowed me to track their progress and achievement of early level, as well as providing challenge for those working towards first level. So drawing club, after having done the training, I realised that we would have to slightly adapt it to work for us. And that was that was really easy to do. Um, when I did the training, it was great because you get given a whole lot of resources 
there is access to a Discord group where you can ask questions, people put up suggestions for different storybooks. Um, so it's a, it is a really good resource. So I kind of need to briefly explain what the drawing club is without giving too much away so that you can actually go and do the training yourselves. So on the next few slides, I have put up examples of some of the children's work from drawing club. So if I move to the next slide, I will tell you a little bit about how we do it. OK, so on this slide, I have put three different examples of the same context for writing. So in Drawing Club, you use the context of either a storybook, it could be a cartoon from the TV, or it could be a traditional tale. And one of the things that Greg Bottle talks a lot about is the importance of the three M's. So making conversations, mark making and mathematics. And through the Drawing Club, we are using all of these. The words that you see dotted around the, the slide there are some of the vocabulary that we introduce the children to. So some of the vocabulary can be quite complex and we will say a word and the children might not know what it means. So part of our session is talking about the vocabulary and coming up with actions to, to show what that word means. OK, so we have cut ours down to three sessions a week. So on the first session, we would read the story to the children and discuss it. In that introduction session, we also look at the vocabulary. And this is just an example of some. There's normally about eight words that we would do with the children. So we take each word in turn. We find out if anybody knows what it means. And if not, then we talk about it together, try and work it out. And then we come up with an action. We all stand up for this bit. So it's get up, stand up. And we just basically go through the flashcards, doing the action and saying the word. Then on session one, we focus on drawing the character from the story. And it's at this point where we do some teacher modelling with the whole class. So when I do it, I like to get the children's input in it. So for this story, we were drawing a pirate. It could be Pirate Pete or it could be a different pirate. That was up to the children. So when I was doing the modelling, I'm asking the children, OK, so what is my pirate's top going to look like? What else does my pirate need? So lots and lots of questioning um, of the children to get them to give you the ideas. We're looking at developing the detail in their drawings. So you'll see particularly um, in the middle picture there, um, the detail that this person has gone into um, with all the patterns on the pirate's hat and on his neck scarf as well. So lots and lots of detail. So we discuss that as a whole group. At that point, the children then go off to play and then we call out um, our drawing club groups. And the children are literally with us at the table for, I would say, a maximum of 10 minutes where they, on the first session, they draw their character. Now we have our modelled character there, but a lot of the time the children want to create their own, which is what we want. Um, and as they're drawing, the teacher is there to facilitate the discussion. And again, we're just repeating things like, oh, what pattern are you going to add for his trousers? Or what's he going to be holding in his hand? And as the children talk about it, they inspire each other and come up with different suggestions. So that's session one. So the following day on session two, we just do a quick recap on the story. We don't read it again. We then do a get up, stand up with all the vocabulary words and actions. and then. On day two, we draw the setting of the story. And again, teacher models with everybody there. Children are giving their suggestions. Then the children go off to play. And then again, we call out our drawing club groups. And again, literally 10 minutes. And the, the children work on drawing the, the setting aspect of it. Again, encouraging those conversations. On the third day, it's the same again. Very quick recap. Go over the vocabulary again. Um, standing up, doing the actions. And then on the third day, we call this our adventure day. So it's, a, it's adding the adventure to the story, plus any extra detail. 
So again, teacher models this on the board, children are given lots of suggestions, and again, they go off to play, and then the groups are, are called back. Now, throughout the week, we are looking for the children to include some number in their story and include some mark making of letters or words. So again, we're introducing this through. So again, it's really clear to see in the middle picture, our pirate had either a pirate word to say or a sound to say. And just so happened that week that we had, we were actually learning the er sound. So a lot of the children did choose the er to put um, into their picture. We also do things like say to them, okay, so the pirate needed a passcode to get onto his boat. What number was his passcode? And again, you'll see clearly in the middle one that the passcode for getting onto the boat this time was number eight. So we're encouraging the sort of mathematical language as well as the English language when they're actually creating their stories. The really important part about the third session is that once the children have finished their drawings and they've added all the extra detail that they want in, what the weather's like, um, anything else they want to put in, that's the point when they do their storytelling. So we mix it up, but sometimes we'll do with the person they're sitting next to, they'll tell each other their story while they've got their drawing club book in front of them. Sometimes we'll just go around the table and one child will share at a time with the whole group. Um, so we, we just vary it up a little bit. But what's really interesting is that because we've used the vocabulary for Get Up, Stand Up throughout the week, a lot of the children are starting to use some of these words in their storytelling, which is really amazing to see. And because the children are talking through their picture, the amount of detail that's coming out in their oral story is phenomenal. So this one was done in November. So this was one of our first drawing club um, ones that we looked at. And without the teacher modelling, I don't think we would get as much detail. So that part of it is really important. Um, we're talking with the children about things like not having the stick arms and stick legs, which we do see quite a lot of. So we're teaching them the skills of drawing at the same time. Um, we looked at, and you'll see on the, the middle picture again, when I was modelling mine, I was drawing a wooden boat and we talked about, well, how would a wooden boat be put together? It would need to have nails. So you'll see the little dots there. So we're, we are looking at really small details to really enhance their pictures. So this is one from November. And I think you'll probably see that um, the difference in levels of ability. And as we go through, you'll see the, the more detail that's added in. OK, so here's an example from one that was done in December. So this one was based on wacky races which depending on your age, you may remember as a cartoon, um, but it was quite a while ago. Um, so we watched that as a class and then we did our three sessions again. And I think you can probably already see from the pictures that the level of detail is increasing. Um, there's much more reference to numbers in the picture. Um, some of them are starting to write words at this point. Um, and again, just the amount of detail, the third one on the right hand side, if you look at the detail in the car that they've designed, is really, really increasing. Um, they've even got the stadium in the back with all the faces of everybody watching the race. And again, a lot of that just comes from the children talking with each other and them going, oh yeah, I never thought about that. I'm going to add that into my picture which is really great. Again, the vocabulary that I've put on the slide is something that the children were using in their actual storytelling as well. Okay, so as we move into February, this was the storybook Dear Zoo. Um, again, I think you can probably see from the pictures that um, we're still looking at including lots of detail. The words, the amount of words being used now are increasing and that is also because at this point the children are becoming more confident with their literacy 
um, sounds and building words by the February. So some of them are even adding the title and um, the pet shop as their story um, for this one. Um, and just highlighting, I just highlighted the fishbowl in that one because I just think the, the amount of detail, you know, thinking about the scales on the fish, the weeds in the tank, the waves. And again, that is just coming from discussions around the table. As you'll see in the other pictures, they have drawn the fish tank, but some people are just taking it up to that next level with the amount of detail um, on their pictures. And again, you see the vocabulary there. There's some quite um, tricky words, but again, the children are learning them as we do get up, stand up every day. And what's really interesting is often throughout the week at a diff completely different time, completely different context, if one of these words comes up, the children will say, oh, that's that's from our vocabulary. That's our get up, stand up word. Um, so they are remembering them. And I think this is a really good tool for as they move further up the school, that they're building that bank of vocabulary and really quite extensive vocabulary that they'll be able to um, use as they move on. So this is my final example of our drawing club sessions um, before we move on to the independent writing. So this was in March. Um, so you'll see the amount of time that we have actually spent on drawing club um, from the beginning of November right through to the March. Um, this one was based on the Magic Roundabout with um, Mr Zebedee. Um, for those who remember the Magic Roundabout, um, again, if you look at the vocabulary, there's some quite complex words in there. But the children are using them as they tell their stories. Um, again, the detail is really quite um, increased. The words that they're using and having a go at writing, and the amount of detail with things like the amount of bubbles that they're drawing in their picture, the machine that's creating the bubbles, and um, it's all coming from their imagination. So another thing that I just wanted to mention was through the work that we've done on Drawing Club, often the children would take their interest in what we've done in the Drawing Club out into their play within the classroom. So the drawing club that we did um, in this session was um, from Mr. Ben and he became the zookeeper. So the children had done their drawing club and throughout that week, the children then took it upon themselves to go and create their own zoo in the block play area using our small world characters. There were some children went to the message center and were creating tickets to sell at the zoo. Um, so lots of play was actually coming from our drawing club, um, which was really lovely to see. Um, and they would often take the ideas from drawing club and go and then recreate their own stories from it as well, not just at the drawing club session times. And um, they would go off to the, the craft area and be creating things that were part of the story. Um, so it was really nice to see that they were really engaged in the storytelling and taking it into their own learning as well. So we're now going to have a look at how we've shifted from this drawing club and just having words and numbers and things into the children becoming more independent writers. So alongside this, we were still working on our literacy. By this point, we had finished block one and our focus had moved from the initial sounds to forming our CVC words and being able to construct a sentence. So that was all part of our, our literacy. Rather than moving on to the block two, we felt the most important thing from there was being able to use those words that they'd learned and being able to create their own sentences. Yes, within the class, we had children who needed challenged and we at that point had displayed in the room our sound houses so that when children were asking about words that they weren't sure about having a go at spelling, we could refer them to the sound house. So although we weren't formally teaching them block two, we were making reference to the sound houses so that the children had access to um, learning those sounds as well. Okay. The first example I have got of our independent writing is from somebody who was in our challenge group. So this was one of the first pieces of independent writing we did. We actually chose to 
take the work from drawing clubs, in this case it was the Magic Roundabout story, and um, they recreated their drawing in their writing jotters and then had a go at writing independently. So this is where I saw the biggest change in writing in primary one. If I go back to a good two, three years ago when I was doing writing with a primary one class, I would find it really challenging because you would have all the children saying, this is the sentence I want to, to write. How do you spell this? How do you do this? How do you spell this? We have moved away from that with the drawing club because the children have got that confidence in orally telling their story. It's a bit like in literacy when they're um, doing their sentence for dictation and they're holding it in their head. We're encouraging the same here with their writing. So we're saying to them, okay, well, think about your first sentence, hold it into your head and then have a go at writing. This is clearly a child who was beyond knowing her, just her initial sounds. And she did make really good use of the sound houses. Um, I've typed out what she's written because I know um, when I shared this before, sometimes the, the handwritten version was a little bit bloody. Um, but yeah, she was just really confident in having a goal. I mean, if you look at the word bubble machine, clearly it's not spelled correctly, but she had the confidence to just have a go at sounding it out. And I think that has really come from us slowing down our pace in literacy and really ensuring that the children have got that confidence to have a go. Okay, so this is an example from somebody who's in our core writing group. Um, and again, we used a drawing club's picture to help with the story this time. So this was from um, the Peat Pirate story. And again, what I feel from having done drawing club is that the detail that the children are producing in their drawings is helping them with their storytelling. So on this one, the child is talking about the pirate who went in the boat. They went to the coconut island, which is in the picture. Um, she's got her spade in her picture there, so she dug up the treasure and she brought back some coconut from the coconut tree. So having all of those ideas that we'd spoken about orally then helped her to write it down independently. And again, that was no help from the teacher at all. That was her just having a go. And I've added another core example in here, the same story. Again, I think you can see from the sentences that she is completely relating it to her picture. And because of the detail that she has in her picture, she is able to write more than one sentence. My final example of independent writing comes from a child in my support group. Again, in the past, what I probably would have had to have done with my support group is work with each child individually because they would have needed the support to sound out each word and get it onto the paper. Whereas now what we're seeing is because the children have had time on block one to develop their understanding of the sounds and how to blend and build words, that they are now much more confident in having a go themselves. And because we've had more time to spend on learning the tricky words, again, they're coming naturally to them as they write. So I think particularly for the support group, this slowing down of our pace of work has had the biggest impact because I haven't had anybody this year who has actually said, I can't do this. And for me, that's a massive thing. Knowing that the children are able to have a go on their own, know that the teacher is there for support if needed, but to see their confidence grow and that they are actually writing a sentence by themselves has been really amazing. So at the end of the process, I did, I needed to evaluate it, um, particularly as when I first um, took it to 
the head teacher at the time, he was a little bit sceptical about the whole process and you know, in his head he's thinking about the attainment. Um, so I'm really pleased that we're now at this point and we can see the difference that it has made um, to all the children. Um, and as I said in the, in the previous slide, particularly the, the children who were in our support group, who before would have just probably sat for a long time looking at a piece of paper before getting anything down, um, are now confidently writing um, by themselves. Um, the children love it. Um, they're constantly asking, when's it time for drawing club? When's time for my group to come to draw? And I really like the second quote here um, from one of our children who said that we get to think about the story happening. I think of my picture moving. And I think that just shows how much impact the drawing club actually has, that the children have complete ownership over their pictures and in telling their story as well. A couple of teachers have also given me quotes there that I'll let you have a little look at. And again, from the head teacher who um, was really pleased with the outcome um, at the end. And I've just added at the bottom that successful learners, confident individuals and effective contributors. And I feel that the drawing club has allowed the children the chance to become each of those. So next steps for us. Um, as I said earlier, this is only the second year of us um, doing Drawing Club, so it is important for us to continue to evaluate how it's working. Um, it has now become part of our Primary 1 curriculum, um, and we will continue to evaluate it and to make any changes that we feel are necessary um, to make it the most successful it can be. We have talked about looking at the progression of Drawing Club into Primary 2 and how we can use features of it to again just keep that level of writing moving forward. We have talked to staff about possibly using it as a support tool for the children who struggle with writing um, from primary one to primary seven and see if that might have an impact. We are about to do some writing moderation so that will be really interesting um, and a good opportunity for us to share what we do in primary one with the rest of the school. Although I do whenever anybody stops, I do talk about it all the time and then continue to track the attainment of writing um, and to look at how the impact of the, our message centre and drawing club um, has had on that. So that is the end of my presentation and thank you all very much for listening. I did include my email on my first slide if anybody wants to get in touch, I'm more than happy. Um, to answer any questions that you might have. So thank you.